The theme of today's video, and it's titled that uh, um, Democrats are against the Republic and Trump is against democracy. And what do I mean by that statement? Okay. Democrats, if they had their way, the popular vote would decide all elections. And in fact, they will do that if they win in this next election. So what does that mean? That gets rid of the Electoral College. So that means your big cities, Philadelphia, Chicago, New York City, Austin, Texas, uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, Denver, Colorado, they will decide all elections. It doesn't matter what anybody anywhere in the state votes, okay? And also the Democrats will pack the Supreme Court. So that's why I say that uh, Trump is against democracy. He wants to preserve the republic, all right? The Republic has an electoral college for a reason. It's to give the smaller states a more equal voice and representation in the Congress so that there's just not mob rule. I mean, look at the Democrats. We're going to get into that in a minute. But I want to get to the breaking news. I just had to get that out of the way first. And I'll just tell you about the breaking news. Was The, the, the first thing was a huge, a huge explosion in, uh, in Lebanon. Uh, Israel hit them with one of their biggest bombs ever. And they are doing a massive flight campaign into uh, into Lebanon right now, and uh, let's just watch that video. Hotel Mahi live. So it looks like the regional war has begun. I, I do believe that uh, uh, Israel's getting ready or prepping to get in there and, uh, and hit them hard. So we're going to get into uh, a couple of posts that I wanted to read to you. Uh, let's, uh, before I get there, let's also hit on another, uh, the other war, Ukraine, real quick. Uh, this is a video of a huge ammo dump, another second ammo dump. How the hell are they hitting all these ammo dumps? From what I understand, they're hitting them when they're pulling the, the weapons out from these bunkers. I, I think if you just hit the bunker, it's not going to do anything because they're supposed to be almost nuclear bomb proof. But somehow, Ukrainians are getting intelligence of when they're taking the stuff out and they're hitting them supposedly with drones. I don't know, but they must have spotters. Yeah, boy! We're going to get on to just a, another quick piece of news before I get into the theme of the video. Uh, this is uh, Mario Nafa, and uh, GM to lay off 1,700 workers at the Kansas plant. General Motors is set to begin laying off 1,695 workers at its Fairfax assembly plant in Kansas. The layoffs will occur in two rounds. Uh, starting on November 18th, impacting both full-time and temporary employees. Production pauses for the Cadillac XT4 in January 2025 will further affect the plant with operations expected to begin in late 2025. So this was a sprinter. I wanted to read this to you. Uh, and this is more on the Israeli thing. I know I'm kind of bouncing around here, but I don't put these bookmarks in order. And for me to just search back and forth takes too long. Israel expecting a response from Hezbollah. Emergency measures have been introduced in the north of the country. The Israeli government has imposed a civil defense regimen north of Hafia, or Hafia, Haifa, damn it, due to expected shelling from Lebanese territory, the army announced. Restrictions on mass gatherings have been introduced. The number of people in one place is limited to 30 outdoors and 300 indoors. And, uh, and from that point on, let's just get into the video. Uh, I do have a high more strike. We'll throw that in here at the beginning. Let's watch this high more strike. All right, so now we get to the meat of the video, and I'm gonna have fun with this because that I've been wanting. Boy, I tell you, I was just I got up and I was like, man, I feel bad. I've, I've had a rough couple of days. I was supposed to be out hiking, and I was gonna make a hiking video because I like those a lot better. But man, I am I'm hurting, man. 
and uh, there's just nothing else to do. And the poor dog, he's, he's been locked in the house for two days. He needs a hike, don't you, boo? He needs a hike, man. All right, so let's get into Christian Meg. I'm going to make her famous because I somehow she got put in my feed. And I thought, man, I got I to gotta reply to this. And then I thought, no, I'm going to make a whole video about this woman. <laughs> so let's just start reading what she had to say. Most of the people I know and love are voting for Kamala Harris. I don't think they're stupid or selfish or deplorable. I do. I do. You don't. Don't you think they're stupid? We're going to get into that more. <laughs> and they're selfish and deplorable. Any Democrat is. They are all kind, caring, intelligent, lovely people. I just think they're wrong, and I think they've been misled. You think? <laughs> yes, uh, Christian, they've been misled. Uh, I, I, we're, we're, let, me, let me explain all this to you. We're going to get into the three types of Democrats one more time. So the most common are the vacuous meat puppet Democrats. All right, so this is the first type of Democrat. And how am I going to prove this? We're going to we're going to throw up a few videos and we're just going to talk about a few things about what a vacuous meat puppet Democrat is. So let's uh, let's first I'm, I'm going to hit you. I'm, I know I apologize, man. I have to watch all these. I can't stand watching Kamala. I mean, it just grates. I mean, it's like somebody taking their fingernails and going down a chalkboard, man. And uh, but anyway, I got two brief videos. The first one, she says, bro. Uh, and, you know, and she's talking to these people. It's very short. I'm not going to torture you too much. But the point of the uh, post was she grew up in Canada, man. <laughs> she don't have no bros. She's a, from a freaking elite family. I, I, I bet she doesn't even know anybody that's been in the hood, you know. Or she might know some rich hood uh, rappers or something. I don't know. But uh, anyway, that's the first video. And uh, let's watch that and the second video. Brother, we are not going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. We will not go back. We also need to lower the cost of living because while our economy is doing well by many measures, prices for everyday necessities like groceries are still too high. You know it and I know it. All right. So in the second video, she was lying, man. That's a flat up straight lie. You know, the go to the damn. I mean, if you're a damn Meat puppet Democrat, I guess you haven't noticed your prices have gone up and then inflation is here. And oh, and the economy's doing great. Oh, yeah, yeah, most definitely. Everybody's got jobs. Uh, anyway, so yep, yep. Anyway, if, if a Democrat, did you see all them uh, meat puppet Democrats behind her just clapping away? Oh, Kamala, we love you so much. You never say anything of substance. And in fact, you've only met with the media twice in the whole election. Trump's given a, a seminar every other day, but you never talk to us about anything. But we love you, Kamala. Meet Puppet Democrat. <clears throat> so, uh, Democrats don't question how their elite leaders have million-dollar mansions all over. Let's look at Barack Obama. He's living at uh, uh, Martha's Vineyard. What, a $50 million home? Just to maintain it alone. He's got servants and everything else. You know that he just, he was a low-level senator. Uh, who, who got promoted by the elite to become president, never worked a job a day in his life. Uh, I think he just worked in Chicago as a, a volunteer. Uh, I don't remember what it was. Something. To, so where did he get $150, $200 million? He's, never, he's not like Trump. He didn't build no damn buildings or anything. But the Democrats are just meat puppets. They go, well, he deserved that money. I'm sure that he did a little bit of grifting. You know, it's okay. Look at Nancy Pelosi with all her insider trading. She lives in a freaking mansion in San Francisco when she's not tromping around. Do you think she lives in a bad place in Washington, D.C.? What's her salary? I mean, what, the, the president's salary is like 150000 a year? It used to be. I don't remember what it is now. I'm sure it's gone up. But she's, she's a senator. She's got, you know, millions of, of, what is it, in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh, but the Democrats, oh, it's okay. She's just an old lady. She's Nancy Pelosi. It's okay that she just grifts and grifts and grifts. Look at Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom shut down the whole freaking state, including the grape vineyards. Gavin Newsom has his own grape vineyard. Guess whose grape vineyard was open during the, uh, the uh, Cervasa virus, right? When the jab, and everybody was getting a jab, and he made everybody get the jab. Except him, I bet he didn't even get it. But the Democrats, oh, he's Gavin Newsom, he's got nice hair. 
<clears throat> he's got nice hair. That's why I like Gavin Newsom. Oh, yeah, yeah. You meet puppet Democrats. Don't even, they, they're so vacuous, they don't even understand all these things. Well, let's just keep going. They don't question uh, $200 billion that have been sent to Ukraine and laundered back to all of their politicians. Uh, you know, where do you think the Democrats came up with all the money for the 2020 election? It's not from donors. If you're a Democrat, did you donate? I bet you didn't. I, I know a lot of small-time Republicans that donate, but it, it doesn't amount to a whole lot. The Democrats, have, they outspent the Republicans by millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions, if not a billion. Okay, so, so a lot of that money that goes into Ukraine just gets laundered. I've already told you how the, 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 the generals and everything are grifting all the money. And we're going to get into, well, I'll just get into it right now. You know that Ukraine has been firing all of their government officials. And so now they've got uh, suitcases full of uh, U.S. currency, and they're all flying out of Ukraine. They're abandoning the ship. They're all going to their mansions all over the United States. But the, the Ukrainian people, I mean, the Democrats living in the cities and everything, they're just going, well, that's okay. These Ukrainian corrupt bastards, they're just, they need to go live high on the hog on all of our tax money. You, Democrat meat puppets, man. They don't question that the FTX uh, scandal <clears throat> where Sam Bateman freed uh, and how his company funneled $40 million to the Democrat campaign through Ukraine, a lot of it through Ukraine. And then he, he stole billions upon billions of dollars. I don't even think the guy's in, in jail right now. I mean, he, he grifted, I mean, he uh, defrauded millions of people. And Democrats are well, like, you know, I wasn't invested in that crypto stuff, so good for him. I'm so glad he stole from all, they were probably all Republicans anyway. You know, it's, it's good that these people can steal from all of these people that invest in crypto because I don't have the money to invest in crypto. Yeah, okay, meat puppet, meat puppet. They, they don't even question the fact that $400 million in Zuckerbucks went into the 2020 campaign putting in all of these uh, boxes. In fact, I, I imagine a lot of that money went to hire Democrats so that they could stuff ballots into those boxes cheating on the election because they knew they weren't going to go to jail. They knew they weren't going to go to jail because if the Democrats won, they would be protected. They're cheating on the elections, and yet, oh, you know what? That's just the Democrat way. We don't mind that Kamala Harris was appointed queen of the Democrat Party. We don't need a primary because we're Democrats. We trust in our elite and everything our government tells us. If our government tells us to get an abortion, we get an abortion. If our government tells us to get a shot, we'll get the shot. If they tell us to eat bad food, that's just the way, because you know what? We're meat puppet Democrats, and we just go along with everything the government tells us. If the media lies and lies and lies to us, you know what? We're meat puppet Democrats. We're okay with that. We're okay with that. Oh, man. So we've got evidence, massive evidence of election fraud that took place in 2020. It's been proven in Georgia. Right now, they found 100,000 ballots that, uh, that were illegally run through the machines. And uh, so they actually, I am them credit, man. I mean, they changed their laws and they're, they're stiffening up. I think they're requiring uh, the ballots match the uh, Dominion. They should just take out the Dominion machines, but I think they're saying, okay, there's got to be a ballot for every vote in a Dominion machine. Sorry, the dog's getting hot. It's a little warm in here. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, and then, of course, in Arizona, there was nearly 100,000 Arizona voters failed to provide proof of citizenship. All right, but that got that case got no standing in the courts, and then of course the Democrats. Well, all those cases that Trump brought, Trump brought three cases, by the way. There was sixty altogether. Most of them wasn't by Trump, and every single one of them, the courts wouldn't see them. They said no standing, even though the one out of Texas, and if you're familiar with it at all, that certainly had standing. It's just the Supreme Court just didn't want to rise to the occasion and defend the uh, elections. Um, let's just keep going. Uh, they, don't, they don't question their own elections. So their cities are crumbling. Illegal immigrants are taking all the jobs. They're taking over black housing. Uh, the illegal immigrants are being paid by the uh, Democrats, whereas the, the blacks that used to be on welfare are on the streets now. They're homeless. They got fentanyl zombies walking on the streets. But you know what? We're a meat puppet Democrat. It's okay if they all cheat on the election. You know, we don't really need to vote anyway. We, we, just, we just want the, the Democrat Party to take care of us. And it, even though they're not taking care of us right now, we're, we're sure that someday in the future they're going to take care of us once all these illegal immigrants have, have been settled in properly. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep, keep smoking your weed, Democrats. No, taking your coke. No, take your fentanyl. 
uh, you know, since it's killing 100,000, 200,000 people, you got zombies walking around in your streets. But you're okay with that because you're a meat puppet Democrat. Uh, they don't question $35 trillion in government debt. And they have no, they're like, well, you know, the government, it's just the way of things. They can continue to print, print, print currency and uh, it's never going to affect me. You know, we're still going to get our welfare, but, you know, and there's no inflation. We're not seeing the prices going up. You know, you saw Kamala Harris in the beginning. Oh, yeah, the economy's doing great. But they, they don't understand that. So I, I ask a Democrat, ask a meat puppet Democrat, are your streets or highways now paved uh, and in good shape? No, especially not in a Democrat state. Now, here in Florida, we do pretty good. It, it, it's streets. In fact, we've got a big road project on I, I-75 that's going to be taking place here soon. Uh, I think I better put him down. <laughs> it is hot in here. I'm sweating. I should have turned the air conditioning on before I got started, but I, I like it warm during the day when I'm just lounging around. But when I'm reading this, it gets a little a little hot. So uh, where did all the uh, 19... Uh, uh, yeah, it paved with gold. Where did the extra 19 trillion go? How many new hospitals did they build in your community? Uh, Democrats, you meat puppet fools. Uh, how many uh, schools? How are your schools doing? You know, when your kids come out and they can't read or write, they don't even know how to do math, and you've got these teachers' unions where they, they go on strike uh, during the whole year and your kids can't go to school, you know, but... You know what? Our kids don't really need an education. They'll get by because the Democrats, they'll take care of them. They'll stick them on welfare. They'll give them a, a minimum uh, government salary. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. And when the government bankrupts, they're going to do real well. All right. How about new state-of-the-art food processing plants? All right. You know, Democrats, you know what? We trust the government and the FDA. They tell us the food coming out of these food processing plants. It's all good. It's all good. We, we don't need to worry about that. Well, you know, Robert F. Kenny jr has his way he's going to uh, look into that and hopefully we'll clean up our food supply because you can't trust the government so let's get back to her her post let me get into my female voice here <clears throat> boy i'm getting a little hoarse what disturbs me is that these people will reflexively think i'm stupid selfish and deplorable for voting against their beloved candidate kamala harris oh well yeah yeah, they're going to think that. <laughs> I think you need to find new friends. Because I, I don't have any Democrat friends no more, obviously. They will surely think I've drunk the Kool-Aid and fallen into a cult because they simply cannot fathom how another decent and smart woman... Well, you're not decent. Well, you, you might be decent, but you're not smart if you still have Democrat friends. ...could come to such a radically different conclusion... It's so disheartening. These, these so-called party of tolerance and inclusion, they're not the party of tolerance and inclusion. They're just, just the freaking opposite. Holds exactly zero tolerance and inclusion for contrasting viewpoints that challenge their claimed moral super superiority. This is, leads me into my next topic. These are the elite totalitarian, warmongering authoritarians. Ah, you know what, you're a Democrat. You used to be, uh, back in the 60s, you were anti-war, you know, uh, you were against the Vietnam War. Right now, man, it, I mean, we need, to, we, need, we need nuclear war if you're a Democrat. Let's just keep, we, we're going to send another $50 billion to Ukraine. Let's give them attack them. Let's strike deep into Russia, man. There's never going to be a consequence. We don't have to worry about Russia's just a toothless tiger with, uh, with an oil well. You know, but uh, we don't need to worry about it. You know, even though the, the Ukraine war, uh, we'll get into that in a, in a bit. So let's uh, let's get into the, the first video here. Uh, the totalitarian. Oh, also, yeah, well, I've got some free speech videos. So let's watch the Putin video first. So this is uh, Putin on all elites and all the problems. I want to hear me and the ordinary citizens of the Western вас сейчас настойчиво пытаются убедить в том, что все ваши трудности – это результат каких-то враждебных действий России. Что из вашего собственного кошелька надо оплатить борьбу с мифической русской угрозой. Все это ложь. А правда в том, что текущие проблемы, с которыми сталкиваются миллионы людей на Западе, стали результатом многолетних действий правящих элит их государств. Их ошибок, близорукости и амбиций. Эти элиты думают не о том, как улучшить жизнь своих граждан в западных странах. Они одержимы своими корыстными интересами и сверхприбылями. 
All right, so that was Putin. So uh, the uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about Russia is uh, uh, Putin put out a list of uh, uh, all of the adversarial countries uh, where people's values don't line up with Russia's Orthodox Christian Church. And he's invited uh, Westerners to move to Russia on a visa alone. So you don't have to pass the immigration requirements that require you to learn how to speak the Russian language and other things. So if you're uh, you're being prosecuted, hey, hey, Elon Musk, if uh, Kamala Harris wins, you might want to be thinking about taking Putin up and moving to Russia. That's all I got to say. Um, but uh, so let's get into free speech a little bit. Democrats hate free speech. Oh, we just can't take our ears. It's horrible. The, the disinformation and that hateful speech from that man, Donald J. Trump. Oh, my God. He's... He's a threat to democracy. Yes, he is. He is a threat to democracy. That's one thing I can agree with the Democrats on. We'll get into that in a minute. So uh, here's Robert F. Kenny on free speech. We need to avoid a war. We need to start working toward peace. He's endorsed that not to me, just to me privately, but publicly. Ending the censorship and the surveillance in this country and around the world. You know, you talked about the reluctance of Democrats, high-level Democrats, to condemn the assassination attempts against Donald Trump. 28% of Democrats, according to a poll that was taken this week, wish that Donald Trump had been killed. That's not a good thing for our country. We should be getting condemnation. And not only that, we should be seeing Democratic condemnation against the censorship that's now taking place in Europe. European community no longer has free speech, which means it no longer has democracy. Brazil right. banned Twitter this week, or X this week. Why were there no condemnations in the White House? We're supposed to be promoting democracy around the world, not destroying it. And we see that all the Democratic leaderships, Vice President, Candidate Waltz, uh, Vice President Harris, and Hillary Clinton this week have all come out for censorship, saying that the First Amendment does not protect what they call misinformation and disinformation. Of course, the First Amendment does. That is the fundament of democracy. The First Amendment protects truth. It protects lies. It protects. It was written not to protect the easy speech that everybody wants to hear. It was written to protect unpleasant speech, the speech that is obnoxious, the speech that is dissenting, that is troublesome. That is the whole point of the First Amendment. Without that amendment, you don't have democracy. Three, President Trump has agreed to make a, the spear tip of his administration ending the chronic disease epidemic, make America healthy again, make our children healthy again. And he intends to fix it by fixing the health of our people. He's not only made that private promise to me, but he has made that publicly the commitment of his administration. And one of the things that we know about Donald Trump is that he does things that he says he's going to do. He makes public commitments, and then he doesn't care what gets in his way. Oh, I, you know, I'm very, um, I, you know, I'm very hopeful. And the fact that he has appointed me to his transition team and asked me to help pick the 14,000 people who are going to make up the government the next time around, I think, uh, gives credence it was genuine commitment to these issues. All right, so there you go. That was just a brief discussion. And then also, I don't know if you knew, but uh, uh, more uh, more censorship on uh, on RT. Uh, RT has now been banned in Western countries on uh, TikTok. So now you can't even watch RT on TikTok. Now, like I keep telling you, this is the first step by the Democrats in censorship. Soon you will not be able to get independent media. Soon you'll... Uh, any channels uh, like The Blaze with Glenn Beck, you won't be able to listen to him. Uh, the talk radio, uh, your talk radio host, uh, maybe Sean Hannessy will stay up there. He's mostly a, a figure of the rhinos. But uh, but some of the, uh, the the independent talk radio, they're going to be taken down. So this is just the first step. It's kind of like the income tax they put on back in, what was it, 1913 or so. They were going to tax the rich. And then it came down and they taxed the, the upper middle class and they taxed the middle class and then everybody was paying income taxes. This is just the first tip of the iceberg. So, um, and then we've got Tulsi Gabbard and here she's talking a bit about the shooter. You know, Democrats, they go, and by the way, 28% polled Democrats are sorry that the shooter missed Donald Trump. So don't tell me they're tolerant and they, they're not bloodthirsty. 
they're bloodthirsty uh, people, man. But here's Tulsi Gabbard on uh, how she was attacked by the Democrats and the shooter. Do you understand this guy going to Ukraine, getting flagged to all of these federal agencies who just look the other way and he shows up to the golf club with an armed, with a rifle loaded with a scope? How does that make sense? It doesn't. It doesn't, Jesse. There are so many questions. I mean, you, you just laid out a very clear picture of how many questions there are of, uh, and how this was allowed to occur. This guy's history, there's a whole slew of questions around uh, the assassin in Butler, Pennsylvania. I, I think it is, is a huge disservice to our democracy and to the American people that still we haven't gotten a clear account of exactly what happened and what went down that led to, to the shooter, almost taking President Trump's life in Butler, Pennsylvania. And as you've pointed out, it looks like they're, they are slow rolling and trying to, uh, to hide the truth from the American people uh, on this one. You know, Pre President Trump's resilience and focus in the face of this unprecedented two attempts on his life where he has narrowly escaped both of them, I think gives him great credit. And, and quite frankly, it, it points to the kind of unflappable president and commander in chief uh, we should all want. I, I just remember in the war on terror, when you'd have a guy go to Yemen, go to some terror hotbed, and then fly back into the country, into this country, He'd be on a watch list. He'd be flagged. You, you know, you don't just go to these places and then come back and, you know, all of a sudden, like, okay, this guy's been in Ukraine hanging with mobsters in the Ukrainian military, gun runners, recruiting Muslims to fight. D this guy doesn't show up on anybody's radar. Oh, actually, he did, but no one said anything. How suspicious is that? Jesse, they put me on a secret domestic terror watch list. <laughs> How is this guy not put on a secret domestic terror watch list? You know, I, I, I serve in our military. I was a member of Congress for eight years. I was a candidate running for president. Uh, and yet the Harris-Biden administration decided to put me on a secret domestic terror watch list. Well, this guy is able to apparently travel freely without federal air marshals being assigned to surveil him uh, and his every move. And, and that's really what cuts to the seriousness of what we are facing. I hope we get answers to all of these questions, but the reality is that my former party and the mainstream media have spent years demonizing President Trump. I met with him for the first time in 2016. I was a member of Congress on the Foreign Affairs and Armed Services Committees. Two weeks after he was elected, he hadn't even been sworn in. I was invited to speak to him about uh, a new direction of foreign policy, trying to block the neocons who were jockeying for a position at that time. Jesse, as soon as I walked out of Trump Tower in New York City, my phone blew up with outrage and being excoriated by fellow Democrats at that time. And here was their foremost complaint. How dare you meet with Donald Trump and humanize him? Mm. They have been dehumanizing him for years, turning him into this evil Hitler-like caricature. So we should not be surprised to see their supporters take that seriously and take it upon themselves to try to take him out. That's right. how serious this is. Tulsi on a watch list, but this guy with weapons of mass destruction charges hanging out with Eastern European gun dealers, not on a watch list at all. Makes total sense in the Biden-Harris administration. All right, so that was just a brief video. Uh, so let's keep going on down. So uh, none of us can see around coders. A voter, voter was never meant to be seen as a moral absolute uh, projection uh, for their th sins. So um, the th third type of Democrat is the, the satanic pedophile um, a sexual attraction to uh, pu pubescent children. Okay, satanic, excuse me. So a lot of uh, Democrats, uh, I, would, I would include uh, Bill Clinton in this category, I include Hillary Clinton. I, there's a lot of speculation. They were on Epstein's list and uh, we know what went on on Epstein's Island before he was uh, killed by the Democrats in jail. Now we got P. Diddy, and they're saying that the Obamas uh, went to P. Diddy's, uh, uh, his, what do they call them, uh, crazy parties? I don't remember the exact name. Uh, he called them something. Uh, so there's been a lot of Democrats that attend all of these pedophile events, and I know that a lot of Democrats, uh, for sure, uh, participate in satanic rituals. So that's your third type of Democrat. Now, could I approve any of that? No, because the FBI and the Justice Department are not prosecuting any pedophiles. 
The Democrats, and that ought to tell you right there that the, the Democrat Party is a satanic party. If you're for pedophilia, you are not a normal person, man. There's got to be some satanic uh, blood in your, in your veins. I'm just saying, you know, we got 100,000 kids that have disappeared into, into child brothels. The child are being, these children are being raped so much that they're dying, and the Democrats love it, man, because they're pedophiles. All right, sure. Uh, I'm not sure who said this. Fo oh, this is her again. I'm not sure who said this first. My vote is a chess move, not a valentine. It's a strategic play based on all the evidence I've seen. I'm voting to defend free speech, to protect women's sports, to control the borders, to correct inflation, and to prevent inhumane and coercive mandates from ever being imposed on free Americans again. I'm voting for Trump. Well, I agree with all of that. So, Christian Mag, welcome to the MAGA movement. There you go. All right, let's keep going. So this is Russell Brand and Douglas McGregor. And they were talking about, you know, I, I just wanted to put this in here because everybody's forgotten about Julian Assange and how he brought out the world, war crimes under the Bush administration. And it's also a bit about more on free speech. Let's watch that video. Who is it that's really putting the American military at risk? Julian Assange or the policies of the neoliberal establishment? But first, perhaps if you could start with whether or not WikiLeaks ever put American service personnel at risk. Yeah, I know. I listened to that too, uh, Russell. And I was never convinced that there was any danger involved in most of the information that was released. But the biggest problem for Julian Assange was that he embarrassed people in power, mm. revealed all sorts of things that we now know to be true that no one wanted released to the public. That's his biggest problem. And as far as danger is concerned, there's more danger of being vaccinated with the wrong vaccine than there is uh, from anything that Assange ever released. Yes. I, I have the same sense. So though Julian Assange I, I, was really always a political prisoner held without trial, uh, uh, humiliated, uh, tortured. Um, and now his release suggests what? A kind yeah. of mere culpa, a change in attitudes, a return to free speech, a new obligations among the press to report openly and honestly, even if they're reporting <laughs> places the establishment in an embarrassing position. You know, how many R's are there in fat chance? <laughs> you know, I don't think uh, any of that is uh, in the offing, unfortunately, although we strongly believe that free speech is the antidote to tyranny. And for that reason, we have always supported uh, Julian Assange, and we're very glad that he's out. God bless him. I'm, I'm glad he survived. And I hope that he will continue to speak the truth. The truth is, is what will ultimately save us if we can get it out to people and people have to want it. That's another problem. You know, every time I talk to audiences, they're, they're looking for threats. You know, they're conditioned. Americans are conditioned to believe that there are threats all over the world. And in reality, you know, there, there really aren't. The, the biggest threat to America right now, I think, is incompetence and corruption in Washington, D.C. All right. So that was them. So I did want to talk just briefly about Ukraine. Um, Ukraine has lost a, a, an entire division in Kursk. Now, if you didn't know a division, it's made up of uh, four, I think it's four battalions. And uh, I, that's damn near 10,000 troops. And from what I understand, there was only between 15 and 21,000 that went in there. They're getting crushed. In fact, they're getting exterminated. Uh, so anyway, that's 21,000 more dead uh, Ukrainians and crushed. Let's just see what that looks like in Ukraine. Сволочі, Верховна Рада, міністри, скільки ви будете хлопців вложити? Прекращайте, суки, цю війну, хвата вам красти. Падли, щоб ви подохли там всі. Як можна, скільки ви положили молодих людей? Ідіоти ви. Хіба це можна так терпіти, люди, що ж ми терпимо? Скільки ця війна буде продовжуватися, гляньте, скільки нас молодих людей положили. Це ужас один. Боже мой, Господи, царство небесне, хлопчики, вам хай земля вам буде пухом. За що ви погибли? За що за тих стервотнів? Ой, не можу. All right, so that was Ukrainian graveyard. Uh, I was going to put that at the finish of the video, but I got one even better. So the, uh, uh, the government is slowly uh, disbanding and stealing all the currency. I hope you understand that. Uh, so right now, 
all the currency that they're printing, uh, the, all the money being laundered out of Ukraine, all the money going to Israel, it's all going into the elite pockets. They're using it to buy up a lot of the real estate here in the United States. Um, so just letting you know what's going on. I mean, right now, silver sits at over $31 an ounce and gold so just crossed the new high at uh, 2600 But I'm telling you, the dollars is going to be worthless a lot sooner. And the BRICS happens here in October. So uh, breaking. Hezbollah let leader Ish Isham Akil, A-Q-I-L, was killed after the Israeli ace airstrike in Beirut, Lebanon. Now, this was opposed by Douglas McGregor, but what he didn't tell you was they to kill this one guy, they took down an entire apartment building. And in that apartment building, uh, was uh, they killed 14 people and wounded 66 others just to take out one guy. And you saw how they're bombing the shit out of Lebanon. So don't tell me regional war is not coming to the region, and, and Israel, they're, they're thirsting for another war. It blows my mind. But uh, I did find a great video on RT of all places. Uh, get you a VPN uh, for now until I get my SSH information up to you. Uh, let's watch some of that video. Now, I had to cut and edit this video. i got to always tell you when I edit the video because I wanted to cut out the fluff pieces. You know, when they go on, well, Samantha, what do you think is going to be the next move by Israel? Well, it's looking like they're going to invade. That's all speculation and everything. So I cut all that fluff out for you, and I just try to get the main points of the video. Otherwise, these, these videos get too long. Let's watch that now. An Israeli strike on a residential building in Lebanon's capital has killed 14 people, wounded 66, according to local officials, who said that some of the casualties were kids. Hezbollah has confirmed the death of its top military commander, Ibrahim Akil, and we have more details now from Beirut, with our correspondent. On Friday, Israel carried out a strike targeting Ibrahim Akil, a prominent figure from Hezbollah, a senior member as well. He is a member of the Jihad Council. He's also the head of the operations division. And uh, Hezbollah has essentially come forth and also confirmed the death of this prominent figure within the group. The attack in and of itself is, is of course, a devastating blow, not just to Hezbollah, but to the people of Lebanon, because looking at some of the aftermath, we realize that the entire residential building was demolished and essentially um, reduced to nothing but rubble. All right, so that was uh, that was it. Oh, I wanted to question the pager bomb in Beirut for a minute. And I wish I could take credit for this, but the Canadian prepper was pointing this out. Now, we just had a bomb threat up in New York at the, the Trump rally. Uh, I don't remember exactly where it was in, uh, in, in, uh, up there. And if, if this was supposedly a dog in training, now if that dog could sniff out that explosive in a car uh, when he wasn't even trained properly, how in the world, because the narrative that we're being fed by the media on those pagers is that they, this was a 15-year operation in the works and blah, 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 and you know they, they, they put the explosives in back in 2022 and they've been waiting to pull off you know, this thing, killing you know, 5,000 people in Lebanon or, or wounding 5,000, mostly nurses, doctors, and kids uh, you know, with a terrorist act. Um, so this is what we're supposed to believe. But okay, the, if these pagers have been around for about two years and they have explosives in them, uh, and I've heard C4 and I've heard Pepin, which is, you know, Decor. Uh, so either one of those explosives, if you go into an airport with any of the, either one of those in your suitcase or on your person, I guarantee you the dogs are going to find it. So you can't tell me that all these people with pagers, thousands upon thousands, for the last two years, never got on an airplane. Not one. And, and, and that pager... Never got sniffed out. I mean, unless they, they sealed it some kind of way so that the, the smell wouldn't come out. I don't even know how you do that. Maybe it's, maybe that's what they did. I'm not saying, I, I, this is just speculation on my part, all right? But for two years, uh, let's say, and supposedly the pagers might have been around even lo a lot longer than that. <coughs> pagers and mobile phones, uh, or walkie-talkies, excuse me. So... All the all that time, no dog sniffed it out. No device that scanned those devices picked out the fact that there were explosives in there. I find that hard to believe. And so, what the Canadian prepper was speculating, and I kind of I tend to agree with them. Suppose the Israelis came up with a way to uh, to cyber hack these devices so that those lithium batteries explode. Now imagine the potential on that. That means every car is a bomb. 
every pager is a bomb. Every cell phone is a bomb around the world. If the Israelis can get into it and hack it with their Pegasus uh, uh, cyber destructive software, you know, that means every politician is a target. Every person that, that says uh, anti-Semitic things uh, is, 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 um, is a target. All right. So if they have found a way to explode those lithium batteries, I don't think the governments are going to want that to come out. And, uh, and then, of course, my comment was, before I didn't think about the fact that it might not have been explosives, I said, well, you know what, my next phone's going to be either an Elon Musk phone, <laughs> or I'm getting it from China, because I won't trust anything out of a Western government no more. All right, so that's it uh, for the video. We're going to finish off with a nuclear explosion that took place in uh, 1961. Uh, this was the biggest, uh, most powerful nuclear bomb built in the world uh, ever by Russia. And uh, we'll just send it, quit right here. Peace out. Stay free. Экипаж одевает защитные очки. Приближается к точке взрыва. Высота 4000 метров. Осталось 3 секунды. 2, 1, 0. Взрыв сопровождался световой вспышкой необычной силы. В этот момент самолет-носитель находился в сорочке, и последующие свечения, несмотря на сплошную облачность, были видны в радиусе до... Кривой столб, поднимающийся с земли, быстро увеличился в объеме. Через несколько секунд после взрыва диаметр полевого столба составлял около 10 километров. Увеличиваясь в размерах, облако медленно поднималось вверх. В своем конечном развитии оно достигло высоты 60-65 километров. Пока вы там что-то думаете, пиздите, делайте. У нас вот так. Или не делайте. У нас так. У нас, блядь, вот так.